we flipped the calendar to April and it's finally getting warmer. Most of your brackets have officially been busted. Yesterday was opening day for the Yankees, Mets, and Red Sox. And tomorrow the season starts for many of our sports teams. Spring fever is hit. Good, Good morning, morning, Staples. Woke up cold one Tuesday. I'm looking tired and feeling quite sick. I felt like there was something missing in my day-to-day -day life. So I quickly opened the wardrobe. Pulled out some jeans and a t-shirt that seemed clean. Topped it off with a pair of old shoes that were ripped around the seams. And I thought these shoes just don't suit me. Good morning, Staples. It's Tuesday, April 2nd. I'm Kelsey Shockey. And I'm Hannah Foley. We'll be letting you know about some events that will soon be happening. We'll have some contests and a bit of a look at what's in store for us this spring. But first, as we always do, let's start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Last year, Staples took part in a brand new project called Souls for Souls. It was very successful in helping to get shoes to people that needed them. The Souls for Souls Club is starting up the project again this year. Here's Robert with a bit more info. Hi Staples, I'm Robert and I'm part of a club called Souls for Souls. Uh, what Souls for Souls does is we collect shoes and we uh, ship them to countries to uh, kids who need them. Uh, and we're going to be having a shoe drive coming up uh, April 1st through April 12th. Uh, we're going to have uh, big bins where you can uh, donate shoes and uh, we would really appreciate if you uh, Donate any you know shoes that you don't really use or don't really need. Um, any shoe really can. Uh, any shoe really is good. Um, so yeah, uh, don't forget to donate. Let's uh, throw it back to the hosts. There are boxes in the rotunda area for your used shoes. It's a great cause, so look in the back of your closets and see if you have some shoes you can donate. We'll have more info in the future shows. Speaking of updates, voting for the Road to Rio logo design contest is now closed. With your help, Julia Shore got the most fan votes. The final decision on the logo will be a combination of fan voting and selection committee input. The winning design will be announced tomorrow. Thank you to all those who voted, and we await the U.S. Rowing Foundation's decision. Next Thursday is an important day to say thank you to some very important people. Here's Tyler Gent with the info. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that next Thursday, April 11th, will be Custodian Appreciation Day. So if you see a custodian in the hallway, stop and take a moment to thank them for all their hard work towards making our school as clean and beautiful as it is. We are so lucky to have our amazing custodial staff, so let's take this day to really give back and share our appreciation. So see you then. Thanks, Tyler. Wilcon had some great response to his first Guess the Film trivia contest. He's coming up with a new film and questions for five more weeks. Whoever gets the most right wins the sandwiches. Here's Will with this week's film. Hey, good morning. Um, so, great job last week. We had a lot of correct answers. Uh, the famous last name in the first clue last week was Fonda, and the film was Grapes of Wrath, starring Henry Fonda. Remember, if you uh, figure out the film, keep the answer to yourself, because in six weeks when the contest is over, you might be splitting your four free meals with 15 other people. Okay, now here are your three clues for this week's film. Clue number one, both lead actors have hosted Saturday Night Live. Clue number two. Altogether, the members of this cast have won six Oscars over their careers. And your third and final clue this week is that the film is related to a Russian activity. As a reminder, the Dropbox is located outside room 450. And don't forget to stop by Christie's on your way home and pick up a snack. Happy thinking. See you next week. Thanks, Will. A bit tougher this week. You can put your guesses in the box outside the Media Lab. You can guess during school hours through Friday at lunch. We'll be talking about our spring sports team starting their season in a minute. But before we do, let's find out what the weather will be like for their games. Here's Jake. 
Good morning, Staples. This is Jacob Mazza with your Tuesday morning weather report. We had a cold front move through in the last 24 hours, so cold air is blasting through the region. Expect fairly windy conditions today with high temperatures in the mid-40s, partly cloudy skies. Tonight, low temperatures in the upper 20s, breezy conditions continuing. That wind will carry over into the day tomorrow as well with high temperatures once again in the low 40s and low temperatures getting down into the upper 20s. Thursday, expect some small warming. And then on Friday, I'm watching a potential nor'easter. It looks to be all rain at this time, but there could be some heavy rain and winds. Check back on Thursday for more information and now back to the hosts. Thanks Jake. Before we get to our teams, March and Bracket Madness overtook Staples for the last two weeks. We filmed some of your predictions. Let's see if anyone mentioned Wichita State. Every year around this time, the craze of March Madness comes along with the betting and brackets. Here are some final fours that we got. My final four is St. Louis, Georgetown, NC State, and Wisconsin. Right. My final four is Duke, Wisconsin, Miami, and Georgetown. In my final four, I have Valpo, Bucknell, uh, Harvard, and Florida Gulf Coast. UCLA, Miami, Creighton, and Ohio State. All right, so going to the final four, I got, uh, I got Southern, uh, I got Coastal, Louisville, and uh, Duke. Michigan State, Georgetown, Miami, and Ohio State. My final four is Louisville, Ohio State, Florida, and Indiana. There are many organizations that do runs and walks to raise money for great causes. One of those events, the fifth annual Walk Run to Bite Back for a Cure on behalf of the Tick-Borne Disease Alliance, takes place this Sunday at Sherwood Island. Registration starts at 9.30 and the event includes a 5K and 10K run, as well as a one and a half mile and a three mile walk within the park. For more information, you can contact Orna Grant at this address. Well, the final scrimmage of the spring will take place today when Kelsey and the rest of the girls' tennis team travels to Greenwich. Our spring sports season starts for real tomorrow. Our baseball team opens tomorrow at home at 4 o'clock against Newtown. Boys lacrosse and tennis will also be opening at home tomorrow. Both are playing Trinity, tennis at 4 and lacrosse at 5.30. Girls lacrosse and girls tennis also start their regular seasons tomorrow, with the tennis team traveling to Stanford to match up with Trinity, and the lacrosse team taking on Conard. Support our incredible student athletes, enjoy the spring afternoons, and have a great time in the process by taking in as many games as you can. One of our teams already started their season. Here's Tyler with a report on the rugby team. Hey guys, I'm Tyler. Uh, recently, Stables Rugby had their first official game last Thursday against Chester High School. Uh, we went up there underneath their own lights, so it already had a bit of emotion going into the game. Uh, some added emotion was that we didn't have a very good, we had a very bad season last year, so we wanted to get off to this good win, good start to the season. Uh, we did win. Uh, congratulations to all the guys who uh, helped, me, helped us out on that. Uh, we won 22-15 with Brian Book, one of our captains, scoring one try, and Garrick at Vornley von Hagenfels, another senior, uh, scoring two tries. And uh, congratulations to Will Newman for converting most of those tries. Uh, he missed out on one of them, but it was a pretty tough kick. And uh, also, I also did a report with Barahona about his expectations for the season. Also, we did a bit of a scrimmage and trip up to Belmont, Massachusetts. So here's that report, too. Uh, so uh, why uh, why did we go up to Belmont? It's a, a scrimmage that uh, it started a long time ago, actually, before we even got up there. It started in college. Um, the Belmont coach, Greg Bruce, um, and I played together in college. We became best friends. Um, he became my best man at his wedding and, and, vice, and versa. vice versa. Um, and then we ended up, he moved to Boston. He ended up playing for Division I uh, rugby team, and so did I. We were both captains of our teams, and we ended up playing against each other. Okay. And after that, we, we started coaching teams, and then we thought, talked about um, how cool it would be if our boys could play your boys. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a pipe dream, okay. but uh, three years ago, we made it happen. We took a bus up there. And um, it's just a learning experience for, for both teams, but it's nice that rugby continues beyond just mm -hmm. high school. And so we go up there and um, you know, we all scrimmage together, we all work together, and um, you know, we do some drills and practice drills, and then uh, we play. And that's, okay. Yep. Uh, that's good. Uh, what, uh, like we already touched on this a bit before, but you know, what holds a special meaning to you for Belmont? Way back, I mean, it's nice to, you know, it, it just goes back to brotherhood. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, some of the boys that you know practice with each other are now playing together at the college. Like Mikey Washington's yeah. playing with a boy Christian, who he scrimmaged with against at Penn State. Oh, okay. Um, so it's something that you guys, you know, the, the rugby players will in the future, you know, play with and against each other. So hopefully. Okay. Be... 
something that goes on. You know, what are uh, your projections uh, for uh, uh, this year and uh, for rugby in general? Well, we, we, we're taking, uh, you know, one step at a time, setting small goals that we can accomplish. Um, you know, one of the goals was to beat Darien. We already mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. Um, we lost them twice last year. Um, we wanted to score a try against Belmont. They're the Division II champions. Uh, they competed at Division I. Uh, we scored a try against them. That was good. Um, I'm looking to beat Cheshire. We beat them before. Um, but we have a good season uh, ahead of us. We have some uh, returning players, and the mm -hmm. Parent Association has done a great job in getting out, like, a workout routine. Uh, yeah. For the players and getting them fit and strong, and uh, you know, one game at a time, yeah. and setting goals and, and, and learning from our mistakes and, and going forward. Thanks for watching, guys. A uh, bit of a side note: we have a, our second game, our first home game, on Friday against the Darien against the Darien Blue Wave. So, if you guys have never seen a rugby game, it's an awesome sport. Come out and support us, and let's throw it back to Kelsey and Hannah. Finally, today, the goal of many of our spring teams is to be voted as the overtime team of the week. That newspaper column blog is the brainchild of journalist Dave Rudin. Campbell Marsh was curious about the column, so he arranged for a phone interview with Mr. Rudin. Here's what he learned. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be nominated as Overtime Team of the Week with Dave Rudin? Well, I decided to take a closer look to see what it takes. How did you get, how did you get the idea to start Overtime Team of the Week? Probably about four years ago, I just was looking to do something different with my blog. I uh, wanted to do something that would be fun, wanted to do something where we could recognize high school athletes. And it originally started as the overtime football team of the week. And it was something we are going to do just during football season. And we had three football teams we put up each week. And it was a big success. And then I talked to my sponsor, Blue Street Sports Team in Stanford, and we decided since it went over so well, we'd like to expand it and open it up to all sports. We wanted to try to be all inclusive since my blog is mostly an FCAC blog. So we wanted to try to open it up so all 19 schools could be involved, all sports could be involved, uh, a platform where gymnastics could be on the same level with basketball and volleyball with football and just make something that uh, could be fun and there was really nothing that I saw that was a way of really recognizing the accomplishments of high school athletes. How involved are you in the sports in the FCAC? I'm very active in it. I mean, I've been covering the FCAC for this is my 30th year uh, at several newspapers I, I've been at and I'm very involved. I mean, there are some sports I cover more than others. Uh, in the fall, I mostly do football and soccer, uh, boys basketball in the winter, and baseball and softball in the spring. But I stay active trying to keep up on everything with all sports, talk to all coaches. And especially now that I am doing the team of the week, I have to know everything that's going on in every sport, whether it's a sport that gets a lot of publicity or not, if we're going to do something where we can honor all athletes, all sports, and, and give everybody a fair chance. What does it take to have a team nominated? Almost always, it's a team that went undefeated during the, during the week. Uh, I email every FCAC coach twice a week, uh, once to tell them who won and the previous week and to remind them to nominate their athletes. And then I send them a second one right around Friday, just at the end of the week. And, it's a combination. Some coaches nominate their athletes and let me know uh, who did what. And a lot of it is just my own research. I, I really try to look up each sport each week and see how teams did. So it's usually a team that is, was undefeated during the week. Uh, teams that beat really good teams that played a tough schedule. And also teams that uh, pulled big upsets. You know, sometimes you have a team that hasn't beaten another team in, say, 10 years, and that's something that will be considered. So I, I wanted to really be finalists that are a team that really did something special for that week. Thanks, Dave. Wow, who knew? Thanks, Dave. And to find out more about Overtime Team of the Week with Dave Rudin, like his page on Facebook and follow him on Twitter. Thanks, Campbell. You can be sure that we'll be letting you know about voting for one of our spring teams soon. Well, that's our show for today. The Period 2 class will be back with their show on Thursday, which is also the last official day of the third marking period. Bye! Bye.